see as we played around with the 16 millimeter measurement on this, another thing I like to do is I don't want to necessarily set this at 16 and then do the swiping like we've been doing. You could do that, that's fine. But in case where I'm kind of struggling with it and I'm afraid that it might not be bottoming out, what I'm going to do is not look at the tool, okay? Because the tool is going to potentially tell me, I'm going to make it be what it is as I drag across it. So when I just set this and I bring the tool down to it and then read the tool, I feel really confident that I didn't force it to be something. Does that make sense? Yeah. On one that I'm struggling with. So I'm struggling with this one. We're at 17 mil. We need to be 16. And we've got this bottoming out problem. We are... Uh, we are a little bit off, we're a little bit arched up, but we're a millimeter high with our number. If I set this to 16, it would give us a 90 degree uh, um, comparison between the float pin and the float itself. Are you guys with me on that? So what I want to do in this case is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, test that float. Do you guys remember we did this last week? So i got a mighty vac here. I'll go ahead and uh, pull this fuel line off, hopefully. And this fuel line's really on there, and I don't want to cause myself any more problems. So right now, I'll show you guys. We got all kinds of different adapters here that I could take and uh, insert in and create different opportunities versus having to pull lines. You got numerous different pieces in these kits here. I like doing some <coughs> water, okay, or even some WD-40. Shake this up here, and we're going to got that little go. A lot of guys will uh, keep a little jar of Vaseline in their toolbox, uh, just like I said, to lubricate these needles and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and see if this thing will hold it. Did you hear it pop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got, I'm only getting about three PSI. I think this float needs replaced, or the needle, I'm sorry. The needle needs replaced. Okay, so what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and physically hold it down. And I still can't even get it to seal. That's me holding it in place. Would this ever work on the bike? No. 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 So we, have, we know that we have some damage here that needs to be replaced probably with a new uh, float needle. Would cure this situation. And what it'll do is it'll start to make that, that well, let's, uh, let's do this. With a new float needle. So you only get three more you just like to see? What's that? Is it only three or what do you... I'd love to see five, seven, something like that. So that in that couple... Three is like nothing, okay? So remember here, as we get a new one of these, it's going to be wider. And as that's wider, it's going to be taller. And then it's going to basically be able to uh, um, bring us back into an adjustability, okay? The other problem we could have is this is a dirt bike. There's a chance that somebody lost something, did something. Who knows if this is the right float? You might run into a deal where you just need to order new parts for the exact year, make, and model you have. Is there a chance that they took this carb off another bike? Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. You guys, we haven't talked about this yet, but there's a model ID number on the carburetor. And we could go to the service manual in the specifications and see that we have a key in and that it's a PJ37EOJK1 uh, uh, in this case. It's a 1 or a T. And I would compare that to the service manual to see if this is the stop carb. That doesn't mean that somebody didn't go to Parts Unlimited or go directly and actually order a different carburetor for the vehicle. Are you guys with me on that? Are you recording? Yes. Take a look here, and I want you to tell me when I'm in focus here. See the little clip on here? Yes. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some points here that these are removable. Okay, I can actually pop this off with my hand here. I'll let you focus in on that. Okay, that little spring clip is what we hinge on the uh, on the float, right? On our adjustable part of our float. It also keeps it from falling off, helps keep it aligned or whatnot. When you get aftermarket float needles, it doesn't come with the little spring clip. You have to transfer it from the old needle to the new one. M, it comes together. And I don't believe that they sell the clip separately, but we'd have to look on a fish. I'm almost positive you have to buy this as an assembly. So if that clip goes flying, you having a bad day? Mm. Okay. What was the company we said we have a lot of success at ordering these aftermarket? The blue catalog? Use it for tools. k and &L. l Supply. Guys, you've got to get that name in your head. That is a motorcycle standard. Nancy's our rep over at k and Hi, Nancy. Uh, it is absolutely standard in every bike shop. Do you know how many K&L parts you order a week? 
No. I mean, order after order after order of power sports. You guys will be seeing it like crazy. And it's not that I'm trying to just say that's the only company. The ideal situation, make no doubt about it, is OEM. It's perfect. It's perfection. It's high quality. Uh, the K&L stuff, we, we definitely know that we want to check every part that we get out of it. It's a great save-the-day company. You'll get a five-pack of needles for the cost of, like, one OEM one. The OEM one, though, is definitely usually a higher quality. So do you guys remember in class where I pulled some pictures up where I showed these tips that actually separated? I showed excessive glue that went down around the float needle. You know, those are the types of things that we want to really have some concern. So uh, play this back to me in a, uh, a check for understanding. Uh, the clip, what do we need to make sure and do with that? Save it. Save it. Save it, transfer it over, not bend the heck out of it or whatnot. That clip goes where? On the float. On what the, part of the float? Tank. Tang. Onto that tang, okay, right? And then uh, our float height here. We And on the tip itself, what did we say in class that we're really inspecting on that? Ridges. Uh, make sure there's no groove in it. Yeah, we make sure that there's not a, a groove that we can fill their finger. You're going to have a little witness mark around there. You're going to see a little ring. That's okay. That doesn't mean that it's it's <coughs> junk. If you could feel that or you take it on a magnifying glass, you can see it's actually dished, then you start to get worried. Let me ask you this. Is this cheap insurance to make these new on a carb job? Yes. If you're working on a 5, 10, 20 year old vehicle, put new ones in. Don't gamble on it, just make them new. Connor? Um, I thought you told me that the, uh, the rubber ones were really, really durable. They are. Okay, so do you replace those a lot then, or no? Almost always on a carb job I'm doing, but that depends. If I did a carb job the year before and the customer left the gas on or didn't treat the fuel, no. If it's a vehicle that I don't know, I don't know the history, I don't know how old they are, yes. For me as a shop, I don't want to gamble on that to then have it to where I have a failure in my work. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. And there's no way to really test it other than this test or a fuel test. Now, when I say that they're really durable, the thing is the manufacturers went to this because uh, with the vibration, we don't have the metal-to-metal -metal contact of a steel needle in a brass seat, mm -hmm. the seat in the carburetor. Yeah. that this rides in and so they were more durable than okay. steel ones you know longer life than you know how we've talked a lot in this class about richer than or leaner than they are just a better replacement part than a steel one okay. so you got to be able to draw that line you got to decipher that out who's my customer what do i know about this vehicle do i know its history it, you know you guys agree with me you're going to have friends in other shops that work for other dealers and you're going to know the quality of their work if your best buddy Johnny down at the Honda dealer did the work and you know he's a rock star at this, you might realize, hey, I only need to clean the car. If you have no history record, don't chance it. So on this, you said there was a problem, right? Or, I mean, there's definitely... And you, you said you would replace the float and the needle? I, uh, I would replace the needle to start with. Okay. The needle to start with. Because that's, it's a dirt bike. That's the first thing you would do? Yes, absolutely. What if that doesn't fix it? Then I would look into if the float itself is uh, somebody's taking it off another model or something else. I'm about 99% sure in this case here, a new float needle is going to bring this up into an adjustable position. Because you can see here too, let's look in the video and then we'll turn this into a video. I'll download it from, uh, from Brandis's camera here. The, the tang itself is quite a bit lower than the float. Can you guys see that? You can just hold tight there, Brandis. We'll circle around here. Do you see how it's, it's quite a bit below? Yeah. So that means it's low. Okay. See that relationship? Yeah. So I don't know if the camera, you can see where the back side of this is much lower than the flush of the face here. So that means that that's really pushing out. Oh. Is that not normal? I just found the problem. What? An additional problem. So uh, screw on the bottom side of it. See the divot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What divot? That little round circle there from vibration. Oh. Now, isn't that going to... No, it should be flush. So since this has vibrated on there so much, you guys see that? Yeah. That's less metal. Do you get what I'm saying for the contact area here? Uh -huh. So you see, see how a combination of the two? Yeah. Man, did that we looks, just talk about this this morning? The float itself, I didn't. Well, we're only worried about yeah. the tab there. Do you see the, the little yeah. round vibration, though? Yeah. It looks perfect like it's supposed to be yeah, there, Yeah, it does. It? I would, I would assume that it, it's supposed to be there almost. Right. Yeah. Right. And it is not. Okay. That would be just straight, straight across there. They do not machine that in there. And that's just a vibration issue over time. You don't know 
was looking at that, I thought I was supposed to do this, since it was like so perfect. Well, and this is cool. And here's the challenge. You guys are going to watch this on YouTube. Here's the challenge that you guys all have is you're working on vehicles that are 20, 30 years old. I didn't have that problem. I mean, the oldest equipment I worked on at, when I was doing 50 hours a week at a bike shop was 10 years old. So you take this and you start to have parts that we didn't ever change as common replacement parts, but they all equally add up, have a responsibility. And guys, we're setting this float height in millimeters. And you notice some of the specs say like 4.1 or 15.5. If they're breaking that down a half millimeter, that little divot in there, the rubber wearing out, you know, all those combination of things are going to make it to where it gets out of adjustability. And the bad thing about this is when we lose our adjustability here, it's a rich running condition. It means fuel is just going to flood through the car, follow the plug out, not run, and uh, be, a, be a big problem. Is this making you guys a little more comfortable on this? Yeah. Okay.